You're listening to Fit Pro Sessions with Parallel Coaching, Season 2, Episode Number 1, Fit Pro Beginnings. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. In today's podcast, Haley and I deep dive into the one of four part series all about how to kick start as a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Haley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity, and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work and that with the right structure, support and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching. Season number two, Hayley, here we go. Season two. Season two. So ordinarily, this would be episode number 49, but it's not. It is episode number one of season two. And how many episodes do we have in season two? We've got four episodes in season two, and they are all about Fit Pro beginnings. So by the end of this season, you're going to be like fully prepared as a Fit Pro, or at least know what you can expect as a brand new Fit Pro making your beginnings and starting in the fitness industry so maybe you are yet to book on a course maybe maybe you've just booked on a course maybe you are um working towards your qualifications maybe you've recently qualified through the coronavirus pandemic yes and not knowing where to start or maybe you started just before the pandemic hit and now you've kind of had a a three month delay before you get going yes or maybe you're listening to this months from now yeah completely you've completed your pt course and you are for or qualification and you are fully ready to start yeah because this isn't just let's get that straight it's not just about pts it's yoga pilates exercise to musicers (laughs) uh uh, kids fitness i don't know where that came from (laughs) but ultimately we want to make sure that we can deep dive into one topic and it's all about the beginnings of your fit pro journey so historically fit pro sessions has been one one topic, one um, deep dive. One isolated episode yeah, really completely. about one subject. And we wanted to be able to really do this a lot of justice by bringing together some key components that will really help you make great beginnings as a fit pro. Amazing. So that's why we've launched into a season two. So uh, what's episode number one? This one, what's it all about? Episode number one is all about starting with the end in mind. Wicked. And with that, let's actually just go over what you can expect over season two. Yeah, go for it. that's so, the end in, end mind, in mind of season cool. two. So uh, episode number two, which lands two. a week today. Yes, something. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> will be common questions. So these are the common questions that we're going to get asked from brand new fit pros, yeah. but also types of questions that maybe you should be asking. And haven't yet <laughs> asked. So um, later on in this episode, we're going to be talking about wearing multiple hats, so mm. to speak. And, you know, you're going to be the only person in your small or big fit pro business. And we're going to talk about you've got to have a marketing department, a finance department. And with all of those different departments under your one hat, you're going to have lots of common questions. So we're going to tackle those in episode number two, such as where do I get my insurance? Should I be a member of reps? Should I be a member of another governing body? Um, How do I get a PPL license? What is their music like? There's loads of questions. questions. So we're going to cover those. So episode number three. Three is all about your self-belief and fears and also all of those things that you experience as you're starting out as a fit pro that maybe batters your confidence a little bit, gives you some self-doubt, makes you feel like you can't do it. And we're going to really dive into that. And I think that deserves a really good episode all about that because it's such an area that people have as a reason that they've fallen out of the fitness And it's industry. something we've battled with Ooh. as well and yes. talk about our journeies as well. Absolutely. Cool. And then the final episode, which will be episode number four of season two. It's going to be all about knowledge, confidence, and also about how you can market and sell yourself as well. So a lot more of the hows go in there. Yes. So I, I think that's a really good place to start. A lot of people, when they, they kick starting fitness or any business, they go straight to the hows. Ooh, yeah. And they go, how do I do this? How do I get my insurance? How do I get uh, my Facebook page up? And you kind of almost want to ditch those. That's the last thing you want to be thinking about is the hows. Exactly. We want to be starting to think about 
whys, whats and whens. Well, if you think about uh, building something in your garden, let's say, I was thinking about our decking when you were saying that. Don't know why. I built a decking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, if we don't start with the end in mind about what that decking looks like, that end outcome, what's it going to look like? Then we could have all the hows in the world of how to drill and how to screw and how to saw, but we don't know what it's going to look like and we're going to end up with something really weird. End up with Ultimate, a ladder at the end of it. Yeah, completely. <laughs> we didn't end up with a ladder. We did end up with a decking. But I, I love that analogy because it's about starting with the end in mind. What yeah. is it you want to... What, what's the final... What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it so feel like? What does it taste like? What does it... All of those senses come into play. But that's exciting, right? A hundred percent. Like, that's what you want to be thinking about, is all this great stuff at the end, end. of all the journey that you're going through with all your learning, all your qualifications, your assessments, and having to go through all of that. You need to have a, a an idea about what you're having. And, and maybe you're listening to this and you're slightly stuck in your studies. And that's why I want to ask you the question and, and all of you listening to this question is, why did you start this journey in the first place? Just why the did you get going? And I think if you can com constantly remind yourself of why, why did I start? Uh, why did I reach out to a training provider? Why did I enroll on a course? Why, 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 why? And I think that's the fuel to the fire. And it's easy to forget your why yes. when you're so consumed in the nuts and bolts, when you're so busy thinking about revision and remembering the valves of the heart and yeah, yeah, trying completely. to remember the order of digestion system. So when you're trying to remember everything and learn everything, you can just end up getting so sidetracked away yeah. from your why. Yeah that you forget to link it to that. And your why could be your own personal transformation nice. that you've had. Maybe you know somebody that's had, had ill health. Maybe that's a, a work colleague, a close friend, a family member that's inspired you to get moving, get healthier, challenge your nutrition. Maybe you've had something to do with health and you've, kind of, you've sorted your own kind of mess out and you understand why you started in the first place. And the, the ultimate why is you want to make sure other people don't experience that ill health that you've perhaps seen there's Absolutely. lots of reasons why so maybe reasons. maybe it's not even to do with health maybe you got on stage as a body physique competitor maybe you've been to the crossfit games maybe you're a a, a savage runner loves ultra marathons maybe you like obstacle course racing it doesn't have to come from a place of pain it could even come from a place of sheer pleasure and 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 uh a place of success where maybe you've you had. found that fitness created like this routine which made you to liberate your mindset and allow you to kind of build up your habits of what you're doing day to day and liberates mental health there's so many, many different things but ultimately that's your journey your personal reasons of why you've started and i want you to answer that question maybe you've got to pause this and write this down and go think about it you know close your eyes whatever it needs it takes for you and think why did i start and why do I want to go on and help people? Okay, because we're going to talk very shortly about being the jack of all trades and the master of one. Okay, so the typical thing we hear is the jack of all trades, master of none. We're going to talk about the jack of all trades and the master of one. But you can only figure out what that one area of all of those jack of all trades is going to be in fitness once you understand why you've started exactly and neil always says make your mess your message i'm sure you've said that on this yeah definitely if, if you've binge watched the rest of it yeah. <laughs> so this means that your your mess it doesn't have to be messy but that story that neil was saying that reason why you're here why you're thinking of becoming a fit pro why you are gonna become a fit pro that reason why is gonna become part of your message and part of your purpose as you drive through and become a fit pro. And that also allows you to move on and think about who you might wanna work with because, you know, fitness is like, I call it the Madonna industry, yeah. <laughs> okay? So, you know, we all know who we mean by uh, Madonna. She's released so many albums, so many tracks, worked with so many different artists in probably, I don't know, how many, four or five generate um, From the 80s um, onwards. 80s decades, onwards, yes, yeah, so it's 80s, 90s, naughty. so like 40 years, you know, spanning four or five decades. And she's reinvented herself and, and targeted herself to so many different types of people along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And r relatable to her. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to think, you know, what's my mess? It doesn't have to have to be a bad thing, but what's my message going to be? And who am I going to go after? Because you could go after anyone and everyone. But it's a, that's the downside. You know, you think a lot of new fitness professionals think the broader I go, the easier it is going to yeah. be to get more people. Well, I want you to consider actually the more narrow you go, 
the more you kind of niche down, and we're gonna talk about that in later episodes, you can become very, very specific on why you started and who you're going to target. Absolutely. And now you can start to go after a very particular type of person. So my kind of backstory to the last four or five years of working with, with clients has been, as I grew parallel, I felt very overwhelmed, very stressed running a business. I put on a little bit of weight and I didn't really have a great routine to kind of training, nutrition, work-life balance. And I thought if I struggle with that in my mid thirties, so must other people in their mid thirties. So that was my mess. I made that my message and I went after people just like me. I know who I wanted to work with because they were just like me. So maybe you're listening to this thinking, you know, I'm a I'm a mum with two, one, two, three, four kids, however many kids, and you've got into fitness and fitness has helped like liberate your lifestyle, mm. got back, you know, the, the body that you wanted to get back into, or that's part of your journey still, improved your mental health, whatever it might be, you're now gonna go after mums in the same position as you once were because you know what helped you and you know that could help others. And you know all their problems. Because you, you know were had all those problems person. you were that no, person no you don't have to be pick somebody that is like you used no, to be no not at all you could be a male wanting to work with females you could be a female wanting to work with males there's tons of different types of client but it is important to choose one particular problem yes. that your clients face because that's going to really help you later on down the line so start thinking straight away You've got your why you wanted to become a fit. Well, it, it logically moves. It now moves on to like the what as well. What is it you want to help them with? Mm. What is it you want to go on and do? And again, you know, thinking about the Madonna of, of fitness industry, what is it that you want to go on and do? There's lots of things you could choose. Yes, you could, the mode of it is the mode. so different. And I think this is where so many new fit pros and veteran fit pros get a little bit lost because you try and do a little bit of everything and you become a jack of all trades but master of none so what's the again go back to why you started was it hit training was it body weight training was it calisthenics was it yoga was it pilates was it a certain type of yoga was it a certain type of exercise to music do you love just working with the step do you love just working with kettlebells what is it you what is it you love about fitness and what do you want to do with that with that person that who what did you imagine happening? And I'm gonna add something on top of what you said. And this means that just because yes, it's what yes, you yes, learned yes, this is or what point. you witnessed when you were a client mm. doesn't mean that that has to be the only model going forward. There yes. are so many opportunities. You might find something else that suits you so much better. Um, so for example, you might have come up with boot camps and circuit classes when you were um, being Brilliant. a client but then decide that actually you really like the one-to-one -one model or you really like the online model. And I want to put the caveat in there, you know, just because you go, well, I love the kettlebell, I love, you know, working with a Reebok step, whatever it might be, doesn't mean that that's what all you're going to be hemmed into or that's all you can use. But you've got to stand for something or you stand for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got to stand for something or you stand for nothing. So imagine that you had, uh, you know, you were standing on top of this huge success mountain, which was mm -hmm. your mountain of, you know, first off, you stepped up and got qualified. You went, endured all of the learning. You qualified. And now you're standing at the top of that mountain with a big flag big red flag in the sand, bam, he said, this is what I stand for. I love training body weight and I love, and I want to go on and train guys, or I want to go on and train um, post menopausal. Like, it doesn't matter who you train, it's your specifics. Yes. But you've got to stand for something or you stand for nothing. Lovely. Boom. And the nice thing is, this is you, this is your personality. This, you mm. don't have to pretend to be anyone else. You don't have to pretend to do anything else. You can just be you standing on top of your success mountain with your flag yep. saying, come to me if you are like and me or have similar values to me and you want to be around me. Wicked. And the more you are <laughs> like yourself, the more you're going to attract and be a magnet to people and likewise be a repellent to people because you don't necessarily want to work with everyone and anyone. You want your ideal client. Yeah, you don't need millions about. of clients. You don't need millions of clients. We're going to talk about your ideal client in later episodes. But, you know, if you stand for something, you're going to attract people just like you and you're going to love spending time around them. Perfect. There we go. Where do we go exactly. next? Next thing is about really in terms of knowing how many you actually need. So I said, like, you don't need millions. 
You might only have... So let's title this part then, Knowing Your Numbers. Knowing Your Numbers. You've got knowing, to know, know your, your numbers. numbers. So the way that this kind of works <laughs> in terms of knowing your numbers is that you've got to understand that you don't need to have tons and tons of people and you don't need just one person, but you need to know what numbers work for, for you, you and with that, the monies that work for you. I think we could kind of segue back a little bit. I love that we can get the word segue into almost every episode. That's my little giggle and challenge. And Hayley, I don't know if you like it or not. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. There we go. But we're going to segue back and think, actually, it's not just about knowing the numbers and dialing in to those. We need to first understand where you are right now mm. at the top of this mountain. Are you jumping two feet yes. into fitness? Are you currently full-time employed, part-time employed? Are you a full-time mum or full-time dad? What What is it you do? Do you want to, Do you see yourself in fitness full-time? Do you want to make that jump immediately? And is it going to be a massive leap or yeah. have you got lots of little like baby steps to take? So it's actually figuring out a, a plan of action and understanding we need to know our numbers in order to make a plan and have these stepping stones moving forward. So let's pick out a couple of examples and we've had these people on our on our podcast on fit pro sessions in earlier episodes if we take for example david lowsby mm -hmm. um who was episode fit pro session like number i'm gonna say number nine or ten it's quite early quite on. early on now um he worked as a it, it full-time employed yeah and then he went into do some part-time fitness work and then he reduced his hours and went kind of to almost a not, I don't think he was self-employed, but still working. He, he took a one-year contract. That was yeah. it. Yeah, so he and went into temp. So he went into temp. That's the word I was looking for. And that helped him make the transition towards becoming a full-time PT because he knew at the end of he this... He had more flexibility to drop hours as a temp than he did completely. if he was full-time. But he also knew contract. at the end of that year contract that the contract was up so he had his back against the wall for about yes. eight to ten months where he could get, make more of a transition into fitness and then he jumped two feet in but he first off he knew his numbers he knew first off how much money he brought home from his full-time job yeah then he knew how much money he made from his temp job yes and then as he built his client base up he could figure out how many clients he was he, he had Versus how much money he was making. Sorry, you can't see this. I'm kind of juggling <laughs> and, and using my hands. <laughs> um, so that when he did go full-time fitness, there was no radical change in the monies coming into his house. Because yes. he had a partner and he had kids. Yeah. Uh, which meant mortgage and cars and whatever goes with life. So I think well, that's I the scariest about, point really yeah. for, every, for anyone going into a new career is... Am I going to be able to maintain my current life? Can I afford this? Yeah. And what's going to be the ramifications if he doesn't pull off? What I love about what Dave done is imagine it like a seesaw. He had yes. his, his, yep. his full-time career or temp job, like the job on one side and his fitness business or fit pro uh, working on the other side. And it kind of like as one increased, he could reduce the other, which meant that from a risk point of view, he managed all that risk. Yeah, the wicked, exactly. So he never felt like, oh my God, I can't afford the mortgage or the kids aren't going to have any clothes or food. Instead, he managed that risk. And actually, he got to a point where he now has to leave his job. And maybe he's not quite right. met it. But he made sure that he'd saved enough money yep. in the background to make that leap when I mean, it didn't quite match. There's only so many hours in a day. So I got exactly. to a point for Dave where he, you know, he alongside his job. Hours. and Yeah, he couldn't do 40 <laughs> hours in his main job and 40 hours over here. So there was kind of a discrepancy. But he needed to free up time, basically, yeah. which was his full-time temp employment, okay, which was like 35 hours a week or whatever, in order to give him some time to win back that and get more clients. And he made that transition very quickly. And he really made sure that he saved to make sure that that yeah. could happen. And then you've and got other, other learners we've worked with that have literally been made redundant on the Friday. Yeah. And signed up to partway through the course and just jumped two feet straight in. Now, everyone listening to this, you're all in your own, very own, very specific um, situation and environment. The monies, your household, your lifestyle, your life is very individual to you. Just like training yeah. a client, there's the law of individuality and specificity. No. So you've got to sit down, maybe with yourself, obviously, <laughs> can't sit down <laughs> with anyone else, but or maybe a loved one, 
the other people in your in your family in your household and or figure out. Or maybe it's out, just you in a notebook. Yeah, maybe it's just you in a notebook and start jotting ideas down of how you're going to move forwards. Because if you don't have a plan, you're never going to feel ready. And people often say to us, "I don't feel ready for this. I'm not ready for this." Of course, you're never going to feel ready if you've not taken the preparedness of being ready. There's a prerequisite to being ready. Absolutely. And part of that, something that I find helps massively in terms of knowing your numbers and planning in advance is to go through your bank statements, go onto your online banking and find out what it is that you need every single month yep. money wise. That will then rest assured your, your little uh, anxiety that brain in one side because you know as long as you hit that amount, you're sorted. So you can find a way to then get the bread and butter covered yep. and then anything on top but of that in bonus. itself. Hayley, you've got to you've got to consider for some people that's a, a big eye opener, and you expose mm. a lot of truths there. Yeah, which is, you know we're talking it's about. Scary. It's scary. It can be. It is very scary for a lot of people. So I think it's just a case of taking your time with that, but knowing that this is going to help you have a catapult forwards, not just a stepping stone forwards. Yes. Now I think this also leads really nicely onto another point of. So many learners start and they say, it's not about the money. I just want to help people. Yeah. Now, I just want to kind of call a little bit of BS around this whole topic, really. So not about the money. I just want to help people. Completely. Because if it was about helping people, it would also be about making money at the same time. So it's be not of this or that. It's not of this or that. They come hand in hand. And if you really want to help more people, that comes with making more money. And the more yeah. money you make, you can reinvest that into your business you can go on further courses educate yourself you can um, go on and afford things like a website which we're going to talk about later you can you can add to your business you can add more kit to your business you might then go on and rent different spaces for your for your for your business so for more people you make for more money you make for more money you make for more people you help and actually they go literally hand in hand they are literally like for the number one relationship yeah they, they are literally like husband and wife. It's not one versus it's the other. It's not one versus the other. So whenever I hear, you know, it's not about the money for me, it's all about helping people, there's a huge um, discrepancy in that as a, as a statement. Because if it really was about helping more people, you would also be able to make more money. And I think also, again, it depends on why, go back to that initial question, why you got into fitness in the first place. But, you know, I'm going to say, the vast majority, 90% plus, get into fitness because they want to um, supplement their income for the house. Yeah. And they want to ditch what they currently do for work, whether that be part-time or full-time, and make this their career. Yes. In which case, you know, if you think about your paid employment right now, you get money from that. The only reason you go to work ultimately, even though you don't, and it's even, it's even more amplified here, the fact that you might not like your current work. Yes. You go to work, not because you're motivated to go to work, it's because you you get the return of the money at the end of the month. And that allows you to pay the bills, pay the mortgage. Yeah. Whatever for the kids, whatever for you, go on holiday, car, X, And y, then Z. you're now doing Fit Pro on the side, yeah. being this Fit Pro on the side to give you that fulfilment that you wanted. Completely. But at the end of the day, that could be how you make money enough and so that you don't so have you can to have do the, the other bit. You can have the fulfilment and the money at the same yes. time. And that's not a bad thing. And that's what I want to really highlight there. It's actually the most amazing thing that you get to wake up every day and do the thing you love and make the money for your for you, for your household and move forwards for you. And if you don't see that link between helping people and making money and actually seeing it as OK to make money whilst helping people. Yeah, completely. Then you can end up losing the value, which means that you end up not charging yourself what you're worth and or you're doing lots of things for free. And then this means that you start resenting the time and yes. the effort you put into it completely. and therefore give less. And therefore help less people. So one of the common questions <laughs> we, we're going we're to tackle this next week on the next episode is how much should I charge? Yeah, definitely doing that. Now, if you common. don't value your year of the moment, let's say, for example, I don't know, you work full time and you earn £30,000 a year. Yes. Okay, it's a very respectable wage across the UK. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've now valued your your year at £30,000, which is what? 2000 I don't know, £500 a month. You mm -hmm. now know what your value is per day. Yeah. You now know how much you're worth to your employer. You've got to do the exact same thing. So if you're trying to figure out how much should I charge, you're perhaps asking the wrong question. You're actually saying, you know, how much do I need to earn 
total? How much is my year worth? What do I want to earn from this? And now you can reverse engineer it. And if I give it all my time and all my energy, how much do I feel I need in return to make that valuable to me? So if it's, yeah. if it's not about the money and it's only about helping people, you're going to put all this time, energy, effort, focus, dedication, hard work, money into helping somebody, get nothing in return. Well, you might get something in return, but it's not what you're worth. And what Hayley just said is over time, you'll start to feel an element of resentment and fall out of love with the very thing that you love right now. And we don't want that for you. And we I'm sure you don't want that for yourself either. Okay, and I, we've seen this so many times. Yes, exactly. So knowing your numbers is key. And that comes down to knowing what you want mm. to get from it, what you need to get from it, and then knowing how many people you want to be working with amongst that. Completely. Exactly. And also know that it's okay that, you know, you can continue doing your day job and do this on the side for it, it forever. That, yes. That's why I call it fitness moonlighting. You don't have to make a decision right now to jump two feet in. It might organically grow. It's just going to roll out. Awesome. What I love about what Neil said there is that we titled this <laughs> um, Start With The End In Mind. Yep. It's not now. You're not at the end right now. No. The end is so much further You can change along. your mind. The end can change. The end can change. Do you know what? This is really profound, actually, because... And I don't, I don't care if they do listen to this as family. But so so often when, when we first kind of kick-started our previous business before this as well and Parallel, people thought we were crazy because we didn't follow the traditional kind of career route, so to speak. Hayley's family are all in education. It was almost seeing that you would go into education. I did education uni. I thought I would go into education. Go into turns like, out we did. Turns out we did, but we thought we'd end up in like kind of secondary school, that type yeah. of thing. And so there was this kind of preconceived ideas of the end in mind of what it might be. And we kind of became the, I suppose, the... The, the black swan <laughs> is that the black yeah. sheep uh of, of oh, that yeah, black swan's nice yeah. but yeah black sheep black yeah. sheep and kind of think well actually what is it that i'm going after and we can change our minds just like madonna did madonna kept reinventing herself and she, suddenly she comes out with this brand new kind of um genre of music different approach different sound to what she was known for five ten years ago and everybody's like wow this is very very different didn't expect that but what did Madonna have as kind of the golden thread of this necklace the whole way through? She just wanted to reach more people through music and inspire people through music. How she did that was different every time. And you can constantly change your mind. Yes. And that's what I want to kind of pass on to you. It's okay to kind of have the end in mind because that meets your values and your beliefs yes. and work towards that. But you can change your mind. Yes. So you can make the decision now. Don't feel scared about making the decision of what you want and knowing what you want, but move towards that. And part of that is knowing that this is a journey and a focus. It means that it's more of a long term focus that you're focusing and on. And you're meant to enjoy it for like for, for Pete's sake. You're, if you don't enjoy it, you may as well just stay doing what you're doing. <laughs> it sounds really yeah. harsh and actually we spoke about this in the last episode of the last season where we were talking about loving the trenches yes completely I was like what did we talk about <laughs> loving being in the trench as a fit pro you're meant to enjoy it you're meant to enjoy that uh, process of getting to that end result and actually that's because it's not instant you don't get you don't qualify and then instantly you have as many followers as joe wicks yes. instantly you have as many um likes on a video as james smith there's tons and tons of time and experience Completely. gone into creating those things so your success isn't and the results that you get with clients actually aren't going to be instant i think that's a really great point to, to really highlight here is that you qualify you're standing on the top of this cliff it's like <laughs> what why did i get into this Who? Oh, mountain. It's a mountain before a mountain. <laughs> okay so we're standing on top of a mountain we drive the flag into the sand and we say right who why did i get into this what do who do i want to work with what do i want to do and then you're like cool full steam ahead and then like the next day you wake up and you're like, oh, I don't really know what to do. I don't really know where to start. Uh, I don't really have any followers. And it's like, I've been there. It's like really deflating. And you, you bust your gut of hard work, dedication, consistency, which I think yeah. are the three ingredients we yeah. really need to do. Um, and, and it can be a slow burner. And you won't get that end result straight away, even though you've got your eye on it. And that's okay. 
Like that's yeah. real. You've got the end in mind. Mm -hmm. You can just keep working towards it. And just because you might be doing the same as somebody else or the same as other people or same as what other people have done doesn't mean that you're going to have linear results necessarily. Completely. And that that success is going to be quick because most of the times what you see in other people, you think it was quick. But it was like an overnight 10-year journey. Yeah, completely. An <laughs> overnight 10-year journey. Overnight so success like, that took 10 years. Like, like take, take Powerdale, for example. Like, we started, like, 2012. But wow. it probably wasn't until... We were busy, don't get me wrong. And we, we worked our ass off throughout 2012, 13, 14, and 15. But it wasn't until, really, 2015 onwards that this traction start to build up. And what we have today is very, very, very different. Oh, our end result definitely changed. Our, our, and our end result definitely changed. But it took, you know, a good number of years of hard work, dedication, consistent on social media, on email, marketing, on sales to move this beast along. Yes. And, you know, I, I heard something the other day from, from James Smith on a video. He said, you know, if you go back, there's like something like four or five thousand videos with... Uh, that he did in the first couple of years of him being a PT and no one even liked it, commented or shared it. But he kept and, doing it. And he kept doing it. Whereas now he's got, you know, some like 600,000 followers. And it's not necessarily about having, it's not at all about having the blue tick and being an influencer or having hundreds of thousands of followers. The message here is we live in an instant gratification world. Yeah, nice. and I, I can that. get anything very quickly. Like Haley ordered a wetsuit. You all know we love yes. surfing. Haley ordered a wetsuit yesterday, and it arrived today. Already tried it on, and it's or, awesome. Yeah, it took and about so, an hour to get into yeah, completely. it. Yeah, but... <laughs> completely. That's instant gratification. Yeah. If you go back, I don't know, uh, just a few years, that wouldn't have come twenty four hours later, and that was just on standard delivery. Yeah, you know, I could order a pizza right now and have it to our mm. house on a delivery in half an hour you get so we live in this instant gratification world yeah. like i can go on to amazon and i don't even need to put in my bank details on amazon prime and i can have it in some instances for the same day exactly it's so quick it's so easy and we get into this habit this routine of something being quick and easy and becoming a fit pro is not quick and it's not easy <laughs> and when you're building this you're basically building a fitness business so a business doesn't happen overnight and the results don't happen overnight and the success doesn't oh, happen overnight. Oh, that's a great point. But let's just focus on that word business. Business, yeah? Business. Yeah, so with that, you might be thinking, I just want to have a few people in my local church hall and do Pilates. I only want to have a few people in my local school hall and do yoga or a hit class, whatever. You're still in business. You're still competing with all of the other people in your local area. You might only want a few people. And to start off with, you might drag friends and family and work colleagues along. But over time, if you want to continue doing that very thing, your friends, work colleagues and whatnot, may stay but may peter out you're going to have to move people you don't yet know into your world and you're going to have to go through some kind of marketing some kind of selling process yes. in which case it doesn't matter whether you are looking for four or five people in your local school hall or four or five hundred people across the uk to work online it's the same thing so i just want to like really just drum that home of like it's really odd maybe to think at this stage of life that you're starting a business and it might just be a very small business. It doesn't matter how big you want the business, but you're in business. Yes. You're now operating. You're now taking somebody that you don't yet know that lives somewhere maybe eight miles away from you, welcoming them to your way of working. You're going to market to them. You're going to sell them. You're going to exchange some value in money yep. or services maybe. They're going to get a result. They're going to become a raving fan. They're going to have referrals for you. You're going to be able to refer them out to other people if you if you need more help. You're then going to have to take that, that their money and run your accounts. You're now going to have to pay tax on those, national insurance on those. Suddenly, you see where we're going? We're with a business. Think about the job that you have now, or if you're not in a, a job, think about a job you've had or somebody's you, you, job, you've right? All, you've Everyone all had a job. A job. Yeah unemployment so as that employment think about that business that you are an employee in 
there's a HR department, a marketing department, there's a finance department, there is someone to call for IT if your computer breaks down. Completely. There is literally so many different departments, even if it's a little company and, and, and you only have, say, five employees, yeah. in that little company, everyone still wears a very specific role. You're, you're a cog you know within a to. bigger machine, yes. ultimately. Yeah. So you might be admin within HR, you might be, um, I don't know, Whatever. Whatever your job, you're a part of a bigger machine. And exactly. If you're going to go into a fit pro business and you're going to be on your own, guess what? You are one of the entire machine. So this is where we go. You've got to be a bit of a jack of all trades. We said master of one area earlier, but you've also got to be a jack of all trades because you've got to have a marketing hat on, a sales hat, an admin hat, an accounts hat on, a finance hat, a repro graphics hat on. You've got to have a social media hat on. And all of these things you might think, oh my God. I never thought of that, and it's, it is scary. Let's be honest. There's a lot of hats to wear. There's a lot of hats to wear. And that can feel like a big step if you're used to just wearing one or two hats in your which current is why, employment. Which is why I think a lot of people don't see themselves in business, because mm. let's say you've been, I don't know, in HR for admin, yeah. and you've had a very specific role for, let's say, 10 years, and now all of a sudden you've qualified, you're a fitness professional, let's just say you're, you want to do... PT or, or yoga, it doesn't matter what. Yeah. And now suddenly you're like, well, I, I've, I, I've never done social media before. That's not my job. Mm. My here... job is to just teach the Pilates Yeah, completely, because yes. that's what we only see from the outside. But on the inside of being a fitness professional and running a fit pro business, you've got to have, or you are the jack of all trades. You've got to have all of these mini hats on. And they're not a full-time hat nope. in each one. It's not full-time social media, full-time marketing, nope. full-time sales, full-time coaching. Is all mixed in. But if we go back to the reason why you started, we wanted to help more people. So if we want to help more people, then I must get slightly good yes. <laughs> or appreciate marketing. I must be able to sell this person. Otherwise, I'm doing them a disservice by not getting them into my program. And we're going to look at some hows for marketing Completely. sales in episode four of season two. I must figure out the admin. I must figure out the reforms I need. I must have systems in place. And yeah. they, you might listen to this and go, oh my God, they, Neil and Hayley from Parallel Coaching and Fit Pro so Session have just questions. opened up this big can of worms and there's lots of questions. And that's what episode two of season two is all about, is answering those questions. So first off, let's go with that. If you do have questions yes, nice. and you want them answered, email us info at parallel-coaching.com okay or go over to our facebook page parallel coaching send us a message and say guys can you answer my question next week yes okay we've got a ton of questions anyway but if you i want to hear your specific questions what are your questions about starting as a fit pro and, and we will tackle them and, and, and being the jack of all trades mm. going, i've never thought of that what do i need to do here i've never considered i need space and a music license what do i do here mm. how does this work give me some of these answers that's what we want from you guys and those questions come from as soon as you think about each of the different hats and that the own it's not like the one hat that yep. you have is what you've learned on your course on your qualification of let's say pilates instructing and you learn everything about how to plan how to instruct health and safety you learn everything about how to work with the client we didn't learn about the other parts mm. of these hacks. Well, that's why we put the fitness business Kickstarter in for all of our qualifications. Yes. Because ultimately, the qualification alone only sets you up to be able to plan safe and effective exercise within that modality or discipline. Yes. What it doesn't do is it doesn't allow you to get found, get busy and get going and kickstart. Mm. Yes. There we go. And make those beginnings. So hopefully this season two is all about that and, and giving you some clarity on the beginnings of a fit pro and kickstarting or maybe you've you've already kickstarted and you're like actually i'm just going to binge watch this because i may have this is just going to lift up one stone that i've not answered yet yeah and i sense? really hope that today mm. in this session where we've really focused i'm, I'm on nodding going yeah i don't know mind, what you're going to say <laughs> i really hope that it's made you think actually take a step back and go that's why i'm here yes that's there we why go. i'm yes. doing this as a fit pro because that's there to get you excited and it's okay that you have all these how questions bombard us with those how questions we are gonna tackle those over the next three episodes really yeah and i think you know um, we, we went back to like earlier like hard work dedication and consistency and when you remind yourself of all of the things you've got to do it can be very overwhelming yeah yeah it can be very scary but if you remind yourself why you started there's enough fuel there to go and tackle those questions yes. those hurdles Ooh, those struggles yeah 
regardless of how you feel, because feelings are just, say feelings are just a, a feeling. They're not real. We can't, we, we can change our feeling in the blink of an eye if we choose to. But if we have enough fuel there, enough fire in us of like, why did I start? This is why I'm here. Then you've got enough fire, enough fuel to go into those questions and and do it regardless of how you feel. It might be scary you because I start all the logistics. Yeah, then. I started this because bam. Even if it's uncomfortable at times, yeah. you can still work through it because you know where you're heading. It's so, like if you've got like a really nice holiday planned and you don't mind sitting on a plane for twelve hours. Yeah, uh, yes, I love it. Up, and a little bit uncomfortable and not knowing the logistics and not knowing what yeah. gate you've got to go to or not knowing what it's going to look like when you get there. Because you're really excited about the end outcome. The end outcome. So you don't need to understand any of the outcomes for house. That but what you do need to understand is have enough fuel in your and fire in you to go, this is why I started. And yes, it's scary, but I'm going to do it regardless of how I feel. I feel petrified right now, <laughs> but I'm going to do it because I know what I where I want to be. Yes. And there we go. So any questions we want you to, we really want to hear from you this week in case we yep. go into season two episode number two next week answering your common questions so uh reach out info at parallel hyphen coaching.com yes Is that right? Right, yeah. i did get it right it, it came out a bit too quick yeah, <laughs> and on on our on our social platforms so whether that's instagram youtube or yeah let us know that it's for the Facebook. fit pro sessions and um yeah ask your question also if you're watching on itunes make sure you leave us a five star review watching on youtube make sure you hit subscribe yep. and obviously on youtube you can hit a comment underneath about those questions as well but there we go fit pro beginnings i feel like we've tackled some pretty um i like pretty it. scary topics today and I really like the fact we didn't actually have to go into all of the details of next week and week the third episode yeah. and the fourth episode. We can actually have time and space for those. So yeah. I hope you've enjoyed uh, season two, episode number one. It'll be great to hear your feedback and get your questions ready for episode number two. And with that, we will see you next week. See you later. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Hayley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work and that with the right structure, support and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching.